everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I am going to be going through the things that you should be thinking about in the last month for your GCSE and A level exams. I believe the first exams begin around the 15th of May which is exactly a month away from now. So there are certain things that you should be thinking and things that you shouldn't be doing um, and things that you should be doing that are different to the way that you are typically revising or the way that you've typically been revising thus far. Please not feel like you do not have any time, a month is still plenty time to be able to change your grade, to be able to make a difference in your GCSE results. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will be continuing to post a few of these close to the exam dates and a few more specific revision for different subjects and exam tips as well. So tip number one is to print a calendar for the month of May and June and to put all your exam dates onto it. So I will leave a link down below for a calendar, a PDF calendar that you can print absolutely for free. And what I recommend you to do is put all the exam dates onto the date. Make sure that you are very clear and you've checked and double check this. If this is not a joke. Make sure that you know what time your exam begins. Put that into your calendar and then put all the exams that you will have in the month of May and June into your calendar. Now what this does is it allows you to visualise which exam you have first and which exam you've got more time for. So for example, I know that further maths, the exam is late in June. So if you do have further maths, it might not be a good idea to prioritise revision for that right now. It might be a good idea to, th to focus and think about the exams that are happening towards the beginning. The second tip is to make sure that you have covered all the content that you need and you know your weaknesses and you know your strengths. Now one way to do this is by just picking up a text page. Now use a contents page as basically a guide for you so you know which topics are coming up and which ones you feel comfortable with just put a tick and which ones you've gone over and which ones you are comfortable with on exam questions tick them or cross the ones that you for example may be a bit weaker on or you haven't yet practiced in, de in depth and in detail. Now there are many websites that you can go to to help you find exam questions for specific topics. Um, I know math because that's what I teach. Uh, so I'll leave that down below. I'll leave a link down below for websites where you can search for a specific and then you can practice specific topics and the answers are also all there. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll feel a lot more confident. So what you can do is print out the contents page for all the subjects that you are studying, put them on your wall and tick off as you go along. That way you know you've covered the content and you know what you're weak at and it's kind of in your face. The third tip is to complete all past papers. Now, I mean everything. Depending on which subjects that you have, there are some subjects where different exam boards are also okay to look at and to practice. So for example, with maths, you can practice any exam board really, they're quite similar. Whereas biology and science, for example, is a bit different. So think about all the exam papers that you can access and ask your teachers and I'm sure they'll give you everything. Try to answer as many questions as possible. Once you've done them, once, do them again, just without the answers there, do them again, keep on doing them so you, you get to a, a place where you feel really comfortable reading exam papers, knowing what information you need to take out and also knowing the mark scheme. Do not skip looking at the mark scheme in detail. If anything, I would say this is probably more important than the actual questions themselves. Knowing where there is a potential to gain marks. Sometimes just writing down a sum that you could have done in your head gets you a mark and a lot of students miss out on those one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks here, the method marks where just writing down something that you know, a formula that you might not even have used but that, that can give you a mark and knowing that is really really important so do check the mark schemes to find out what information is that you should include and you could get marks for if you. The fourth tip I have is to start using active recall methods for revision. At this point, you should not be making flashcards, highlighting, you know, reading dense textbooks. That should have been done before. At this point, what you should be doing is using methods that promote memory retention and, and that promote memorization. So things like um, using flashcards. So if you have flashcards, then you can actually just use them, and that's really good because that keeps you on your on your toes. If you don't have flashcards, there are places that you can buy them. There is a YouTuber called Primo's Kitten who has her own flashcards that she sells. So you can go on her website. I'll leave the links down below for that as well, um, and you can actually purchase them yourself and use them. Taking notes and highlighting at this stage really is not promoting any memorization and any learning. Uh, mind maps are also a really good idea. So, I don't know, a topic, for example, let's say the heart 
or the cardiovascular system and just writing down all the points that you know about that topic is another really good way of trying to bring everything you know together and that is what you should be doing right now not trying to make these pretty you know revision notes that really is going to is that really is not going to benefit you at all and i know that you guys probably hear this a lot from youtubers that are quite young um, and that really don't know the best practice but trust me <laughs> doing that stuff right now is really not going to help you at all. The fifth thing that you should be doing right now is knowing the time limits that you have for essay style questions. So in certain subjects like literature you might have to write an essay and you'll be given I don't know 45 minutes for example to write that essay so you should be comfortable with writing an essay in 45 minutes and that includes planning the essay um, writing the essay and editing the essay. Don't forget that planning and editing is part of that time. Remember that marks kind of equates to minutes, so three marks should be approximately three minutes. And the faster you can get at the easier questions, um, the longer you can take on the questions that require more thought. I've read quite a few examiner reports and one common theme that comes up in all of them is that students don't necessarily get to the last questions. And that is a shame because most likely you probably could answer it or you probably could get a few marks from it. And it is a shame to have not being able to complete every question in an exam or not be able to get to the end or conclude your essay. Um, it doesn't look good if you've written an essay but it has no conclusion because you had no time. So be really strict with yourself put a timer on your phone, put the phone away and come and end the paper only when the time has finished. My sixth tip is that you should be really strict with yourself now. It is only a month away from the first exam most likely and this is the point where you should be getting rid of all distractions. So that includes friends and I'm sorry for it to have to say this, if your friends are not the kind of friends who are promoting your learning and encouraging you to do well, then you do need to drop them for this month and that's just how, how blunt it's going to have to be. Try to make sure that you're cutting away all distractions and remember that it's your future at the end of the day. You probably won't even know these people in a year or two. So remember that it's your future and if you have to say, guys, I need a month to just do me, I need a month to just concentrate, delete Instagram, delete Snapchat, delete whatever it is that you have and just focus for this month, I promise you, you will reap all the rewards and you'll feel so much better and so less guilty at the end of it make sure that you are using the next month as best you can for you. My seventh tip is that you should be trying to essentially predict what questions could come up. So this is this is particular case with, let's say, science. There are topics in science, for example, in biology, that are more likely to be asked in a five or six mark question. So maybe how does oxygen get around the body? That could be a nice five mark question. We're talking about hemoglobin, um, or even fetal hemoglobin, the difference between fetal and adult. That could be a nice six mark question. So try to predict those things. Try to take a look at mark schemes and say, all right, there are 10 points here that you could get a mark for, this could be a six mark question. So try to predict, try to think about themes in English that could come up, try to think about um, topics that could be something that you could write a short essay on, um, try to think about links between different topics, especially in maths, they do like to now link different topics together. So there'll be a question that looks like it's to do with area, but you've got Pythagoras in it, and you've got volume, and you've got all sorts. So it's really important for you to think about links between different topics and also try to predict questions that are coming up and think about a potential answer that you could write. My eighth tip is to make sure that you are getting enough sleep right now. There is only a month left, which isn't a long time, but it is long enough to get burnt out if you're not looking after yourself and your well-being. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. Go to sleep on time, get in bed by 9 or 10, be asleep by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and wake up in the morning nice and fresh at 6 or 7 a.m. You've got your eight hours sleep and it means that by the time the exams arrive, you can miss out on sleep then, but it wouldn't be such a stressful thing upon your body because you've been able to maintain a good healthy amount of sleep throughout the past month. Otherwise, if you are lacking on sleep and you're stressing yourself out this month, then when it comes to the exams, you will burn out, you will be stressed out and it might not end well. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, you're eating well, you're keep staying hydrated, you are sleeping well. I cannot emphasize this enough. You are sleeping well. Don't oversleep. Eight hours, seven to eight hours is more than enough for most people. So make sure you're getting enough sleep and that you are using your time wisely um, and balancing doing other things. You know, don't stop 
doing things that you enjoy. If you play an instrument, if you go out with friends, if you go out with your cousins, that's fine. But just balance it and make sure that you're prioritising your own. My last tip that I think is really underrated and I don't really see people talk about this much is to learn diagrams. So learn how to label diagrams of different parts of the body, of different systems, in geography, I don't know, different types of rocks. Learn how to draw them and learn how to label them because in an exam question, if you're asked about, I don't know, what type, a type of rock of, or a type of rock formation, if you were able to draw the rock formation and label it appropriately and correctly, that can actually give you the full marks without you having to write anything down. And this is again something that I don't feel like I hear people talk about very much up until university. If you were asked a question about the structure of the phospholipid bilayer, if you were to actually draw the bilayer out as a phospholipid bilayer and you were to label the hydrophilic heads, the tails, etc., um, that would give you the full marks. And some students are just better at visualising. I've got a bit of a photographic memory, essentially. So if you're able to learn the images and you feel a bit less confident on the writing aspect, learn the images, that's completely fine. So I really hope that this video helped you think a little bit more about what you are going to be changing and what you are going to be adding to your revision schedule for the next month. I know you guys will do amazing if you're here that means that you have the right intentions and you are on the right track but now get off YouTube and go and continue revising. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate you being here. See you guys in my next video. Bye!